Welcome back to Flora and the Novice Explorers. Today we are going to do our first ever Q&A and what better time to do it because it is piddling down outside and pretty miserable. So let's start off with saying cheers, Craig asks, fancy brew? And the answer is always. Yes. Craig, we always fancy a brew, mate. Just give us a heads up if you're in the area. So the first question is from Daz and he asks, how many miles did your van have on it when you bought it? Uh, when we first bought the van nearly three years ago now, we were lucky enough to find one with relatively low mileage. That was 78,000. But as of right now, we've just ticked over 100,000 miles. So hopefully there's plenty more left in it. Hopefully. Which brings us on to our next question from 2PV, where they ask, in our first month... <laughs> <laughs> so we'll now put up a map of our route where we went um, and that was basically from our home in Shropshire to the northwest coast of Wales mm -hmm. then we made our way back to Snowdon up to the Lake District yep. up to Carlisle yep. and then up into Scotland yeah. where we did a few bits and pieces over to the Isle of Skye back across back across the west coast yep. um, up to Ullapool across to the Outer Hebrides down those, back home, well back home, back to the mainland, wasn't home at all was it, no. And then down the east coast of the UK, down to Harwich, where we got the ferry across to Holland. The next question comes in from Carl, and he obviously watched our Oban episode, where we had our first little um, accident, I think you could say. He uh, asked Cal, did you secretly thump Meg off camera for donging the rear bumper? A ding is a small dent. Meg gave that a serious donging. The answer to that, Carl, is violence is never the answer. But it sometimes is. Um, I think I might plan to dong Meg's head off the other side just to even it out a little bit. On to the next question from Gareth, which is on the same kind of lines as the previous one. What is the biggest unresolved issue that gets on your nerves? He wants us to answer that, both of us, but separately, individually. Yeah. Essentially, we've got two climates in this van. Mine, which is <laughs> I run very cold, and Meg is very hot. But I do like to be comfortable, and the heat does a good job. So that's my thing. Yeah. My issue is we have we pull up into a car park or a camping spot, and we spend the best part of three plus minutes working out where the sun is coming from and where the best spot is to park to get the maximum solar out of our solar panel. Um, I find that quite anno annoying. I understand um, the importance of it, but the inability to make a quick decision is the thing that winds me up the most about you. <laughs> our next question is our most popular question. So there's a few people that have been um, asking the same one, so we've put it in one bubble, which is, what would we do differently to Flora and what would we change? So Karen has asked that, Chris and Shell have asked that, and Andrew has also asked that kind of question. So the one thing we definitely do differently, and one thing we are in the process of sorting out actually, is fitting a split charge relay. Andrew has also been a little bit more specific and asked if we regret not getting a pop top. And the answer is? No, surprisingly. I thought before embarking on this adventure that that would be the main thing that really did my head in. We don't think about it very often. I do a lot of the cooking just sat on the corner of the bed. We are very happy with the layout and the storage. Um, one thing we thought about was maybe having a concertina in the cupboard, like the wardrobe doors. If it crinkled, it would be great. So that, that would be something that we'd maybe change. And also another thing, uh, camping gas is very useful out here. It's in abundance, it's easy to get hold of, but it's not the cheapest option, unfortunately. Um, if we had an, a refillable LPG tank in there, we'd be saving a lot more money. Yeah, this is life, isn't it, this yeah. little setup? We're very lucky because we only put the table in to comply with the DVLA rules at the time, and the swivel seat was a bit of an arbitrary choice. We thought, yeah, let's just put it in there. But if we hadn't, I think we'd be struggling a lot more. Yeah, because we, we have this much extra space, yeah. which I'd say it's getting on for a fourth of the space, fourth of that space more. Which brings us on to Julie's question. Yes. Which is, can you spin round the twin passenger seat without getting it stuck and swearing? I'm usually the one that sets up when we park up. I set the swivel seat. I would say eight times out of 10, now, after a lot of practice, I can get it perfectly. But all it takes is one 
one uh, false move. One false move, and you just can't figure it out. It's like a, an enigma. Sometimes you can't work it out, and you're hitting it off the side. Yeah. And sometimes you're tired and just want to get it sorted. Um Next question is from Emma, and she asks how we're getting on with our cool box bag, or cool bag, as it's also known, um, especially in hot weather. Um, it's all right. I want a fridge, I think. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it just because it draws a lot of power constantly. We're hopeful, hoping that this will be this issue will be resolved more so with the split charge but I think this needs to go on the list for uh, things that we'd do differently is putting a fridge in. Mm -hmm. So the next question, and I hope I'm not pronouncing the name too wrong, so apologies if I am, it's from Laura Lee. And the question is, how do your family and friends handle you two being gone, essentially? And what material items have you given up uh, that you wish you could take with you? So let's start with off with the family. This has been in the making for about three years, so everyone in our lives knew about it. Yeah. From parents, family, uh, we had a big sending off do, didn't we? Yeah. So it's not been sprung on them um, overnight. So yeah. everybody was geared up. So we've been in constant contact with them whenever they want us and we need them, um, with um, Facebook, WhatsApp, and FaceTime and Facebook, things like yeah. that. I don't think they realise that we've actually gone yet. Um, and then part two of the question was a material thing that we missed. Um, I would have probably liked to bring along an acoustic guitar. I just didn't need it and couldn't justify bringing it in the van. It's too big. And mine would be another pair of footwear. I would like think I'd like another pair of trainers. Hannah Joan has asked when we will be visiting Italy and the answer is February 2020, if all goes well. Hannah has also asked what home comforts we miss. <laughs> so the one thing I really do miss from home, and it's not um, really even come from a hygiene perspective, is a nice hot bath. I really do miss just sitting in the bath, getting some bubbles, and just watching some Netflix of an evening in the bath. Hours he spent. <laughs> he used to come out wrinkly. Yeah. And I also miss an oven. Yeah. I like to be able to put big roast stuff. There's so many things that I could cook in here, but can't because we've got no, no uh, oven. So that would go on the list of things that to put into the next van, actually, as yeah. well, thinking about it. It's been so tough when we go food shopping, just looking at all the stuff that we can't eat. <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> so the next question comes from Sham, and they ask, do you have a general itinerary, and how do you cope with the cold? So coping in the cold, head south for winter i think yeah. that's the main thing and that is our itinerary in a nutshell combining that with our very useful and efficient planar diesel heater which we rate highly yeah i think i'd be suffering quite a bit if we didn't have it so that leads on to the next question from natalie and she would like to know what countries we're going to visit on our trip so we began with the big plans big dreams of going from the Netherlands to Germany, to Poland, to Czechia, to Slovakia, to Hungary, into um, Croatia, across to Italy, France, Spain, Portugal for January. But we planned this when we had no idea how we wanted to travel or what to expect. So what we've decided now is to take it much more chilled out we're in Germany at the minute and we're going to pop into Austria because yep. it's right at the very south tip. We're going straight down Germany, ending in Fussen. Then we're going to go into Austria for a little bit. Yeah. Across to Switzerland, probably. And then we're going to be hitting France, Spain, and Portugal. Into the next question because they're all ever so slightly connected, which is from Noosh. And they've asked Will we be visiting Scandinavia on our travels? The answer is yes, as long as the money will last. But whether or not I'll have to wait for the next trip we do, we don't know. Obviously, we'd love to do it all now, and we're really still enjoying it, so we'd love to just keep going for as long as possible, but it's not entirely feasible at the minute. Which also answers Victoria's question, uh, when are we bloody coming home? When the money runs out, love, <laughs> I'll be back home in your arms. So we've got two questions from Donna here. The first one regards uh, internet on the road. So she's suggesting a 4G booster as it would help with uploading our content. Yes, it would. We have thought about it, but at the moment we're having big issues with just getting a provider out here. 
because we're going for a trip that is longer than three months we have an issue with stable links back at home if you're out of the uk for longer than uh three or four months at a time then they'll either stop your contract or just start charging you a lot more money which yeah so donna's second question is more of a suggestion actually and she's asking um, why don't we put links in our sort of video descriptions asking for donations towards the channel for support? We have put some thought in recently about launching a Patreon page, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that we do it right and that we offer content that supporters are going to want. So if we were to do something like that, it's most likely going to be the Patreon route because we want to give something back for your donation, not just asking and support, for money. Yeah. yeah, so that's that. We have thinking about it, but as of right now, we haven't got anything set up. Next up is Tuna. She wants to know what the highs and lows of the trips have been so far. She has asked multiple questions, but we let her because it's Tuna. So highs and lows, what's mm. your high? What's been our high? I think a general high for me would be I don't know if this is retrospectively, but being on the Outer Hebrides with that much freedom mm. and that much solitude at times. The beaches were unbelievably gorgeous. Yeah. So that would be a general high. Yeah. Another high was getting published in the magazine. Yeah. That was really exciting. And I remember just being like, oh, this is happening. And then lows, lows. In the space of about four days, I shut my thumb in the van door. We dropped the radio and it gave it a big dent and we had about four solid days of rain on the Isle of Skye. Mm. That was a low point for me. I, I cried. Part two of Tina's question. Uh, oh, it's part three actually as well. Uh, where do you think we might ultimately live or buy land? Or do you think, if you can, just keep rolling along? For me personally, I would like to go and be in the sticks. Off the grid, self-sufficient as much as we can do making our money stretch because that will also enable us to go roaming about when we want. Yeah, in the winter months. Part two, I think this is aimed at you, Carl, because it's been mean and miserable. No, I'm joking. That's <laughs> probably me, actually. <laughs> also, tips on being extremely mean as I seem to be meaner and more miserable on every trip. Tina, it happens to the best of us. Sometimes we wake up in a foul mood. Yeah. A little bit like this morning, actually. It ebbs and flows, isn't it? Treating yourself to a nice cooked meal helps. Mm. Um, listening to good music. We have quite um, similar taste in music. Just banging on a, an album that we both love and just remembering why we're here and why we're doing it. We, we don't want to romanticise this lifestyle because it isn't all the time. It actually, how, how much percentage do you think it would be romantic, beautiful versus actual like, oh, it we need the toilet and we can't find one. It hasn't been romantic for me since I saw you piddling in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a daily event most of for the time. For both of us, yeah, romance going out the window. <laughs> Question from Anthony. He asks that... Um, as we only stayed in one campsite on the UK adventure, how do you keep clean without a shower in the van? So for our first month, we had five showers. We swim in lakes and the sea and have a bit of a wash, but we are comfortable within ourselves whapping out the bucket <laughs> wash. The UK is a lot harder in general. Since we've been in Europe, you can pull up at a free air or motorhome stopovers and you can get showers for a euro or free sometimes. Yeah. It's so much better and easier over here. You could just, you could live absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, it's much more readily available. Um, they're quite easy to hunt down. It's just, they're just better over yeah. here. They're far more set up and mm. tolerant of motorhome and camper vans. Yeah. Last question is from Davy. The... And it's quite a big question to, Put it in a nutshell it's regarding the dvla reclassification of your self-build vehicle basically means we get better insurance generally because it's it's then insured for its proper value you can get sort of unlimited mileage and european cover a lot easier if it's a motorhome i must say we've been out of the loop a little bit since we got flora put through but i do see a lot of people online discussing this as obviously people are still trying to go through the process so i've tried to do a bit of research as i said we've been out of the loop and it seems to be more uh they want it to appear to be a motorhome as well from the outside so obviously stealth vans 
probably aren't going to pass anymore. It is a shame, but I know, well, I've seen people online trying to flaunt the regs, you know, putting on fake windows and stuff like that, which isn't great because then the vehicle isn't technically registered yeah, and, correctly. And I, is it going to, if they the worst, worst comes to the worst and they did have a smash, are they going to be properly covered by insurance? Well, that's it. It's not worth the risk, but it's a, it looks like it's a developing thing at the minute and it's all a bit hazy as well. There's different information come from different parties, so I can't give a proper opinion on it, I don't think, at the minute without doing a lot more research. Oh, we almost forgot. Janice has asked a question. And that question is, is there one place slash country you're really looking forward to visiting? Uh, my answer to that would be Italy in general. I'm very excited for the food and the culture and also in general just to get back to the ocean. Mm -hmm. I'm quite looking forward to Switzerland and possibly Austria as well. I don't know why, but I think the, the beauty of the landscapes and stuff is something that really interests me. I want to take some more outdoors photography as we go. Sort of excited about it all really because you never really know what you're going to get, do you? Yeah, and how far we're going to get. Yeah. We just don't know, do we? But that's it really. It's a pretty broad spectrum, but we're excited about a lot of things for once. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. Love you. So if you'd like your question to feature in our next Q&A, hold on to it for us. But if you'd like us to quickly answer your question, pop it in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching as always. Like, subscribe and share and click the bell button to get notified whenever we upload a video. Thanks for watching again. See you later.